Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Ale and in this video we're going to be doing something a little bit different from my previous videos. So instead of building a simple app that we go through in a tutorial, I'm going to be showing you some of the new features that Apple released for Swift UI during their developers conference this year. So as many of you know, WWDC is happening this week and Apple has released quite a new uh, a good amount of things uh, for Swift UI and so I wanted to show you one, some of my favorites so far and so what we'll be doing is I'll just go through some examples of how you can use some of these new uh, Swift UI features and components. So I have a note here with some of my favorite new features and so let's just go through it. And so let's start with the first point here, which is searchable. So Apple introduced this new searchable modifier for SwiftUI that will uh, automatically insert a search bar in your app. And you can use uh, like a query string to, to know what the user has typed in the search bar. Since this is all very new, you're going to have to get Xcode 13, which is currently in beta, but you can download it from Apple's developer's website. So what we're going to do is in our content view, we're going to add first a list. So let's do private let uh, fruits, which is just uh, an array of string. And let's initialize it with some default values here. So I'll add here uh, strawberry, um, blueberry, let's add raspberry, blackberry, and let's add a banana. Now we're going to add a state variable. At state, private, var, search term. And this will just be an empty string in the beginning. And then we're going to add a new list, which will be filtered based on what the user entered in the search bar or based on what the search term is. So let's do here uh, private var, filtered fruits, which is uh, an array of string. This will be a computed variable. So here we're going to do, if the um, search term is empty, then we don't want to filter anything. We'll just return here the fruits list. And otherwise we're going to filter our fruits list. And what we'll check here is that um, the string contains the search term. So we'll do uh, string dot lowercase contains uh, search term dot lowercase. Perfect. So now let's modify our view. So what we're going to do here is um, let's add a navigation view and then inside our navigation view we're going to add a list and for each of our uh, filtered fruits where the ID is just the, um, the string itself so dot self uh, fruit in and here we'll just add some uh, text that will show the fruit. So let's run our app and see how this looks. Okay so as you can see we have our list of fruits here. So now let's go back and I'll show you how we can use searchable to be able to search from this list. So all we have to do is under our list, we can add the dot searchable modifier and we have to provide a binding to a string, which is the uh, text that the user has entered. So here we'll do dollar sign search term. And so now let's uh, run our app again. Okay, so if you swipe, you can see that there is now a search bar. And as you start typing, you see that our list is filtered to show the correct results. Great, so uh, let's see what else I have on my list. So I want to show you the list 
row se separator modifier. And with this new modifier, we can actually hide the separators in the list. So um, let's go here to our view. And what we'll do is under our text, we can do dot list row separator, and we can modify the visibility to make the separator uh, hide itself. And so now let's run our app again. And you can see that the separator is no longer visible. Now, uh, the next thing I want to show you is the list row separator tint. So we can actually modify the color of the separator. So instead of doing uh, dot list row separator, we can do dot uh, list row separator tint. And we can provide here a color. For example, uh, we can use red. And let's run this again. Perfect. As you can see, now the separators are uh, red. Okay, um, now next on our list is the swipe actions. So uh, with UIKit, we could add these actions so that when you swiped uh, a row in the list, either to the left or to the right, depending on how you set up your, your actions, um, you could add uh, different things. For example, like a trash icon that would delete the row from the list. Um, so I'm going to show you how we can use swipe actions here in Swift UI. So we can go back here and um, what we're going to do is under our text, I'm going to use the swipe actions modifier. And in the content, I'm going to add a button. And this button will have an action which I'm going to leave empty. Uh, or let's actually just add a print statement here. So we can add a print uh, star. And in the label, I'm going to add a label. Um, let's use title, uh, favorite, system image. I'm going to use the star system image. And I'm also going to modify the tint of the button. So I'm going to do the tint, um, let's see here, the tint, and this will be um, yellow. So let's run this again. And now we can swipe and you can see that we have our action here. If we press it, uh, you can see that star was printed to the console. And you can also do a, like a, a long swipe. Perfect, so now let's go back to my notes and see what I have next. So uh, next I have async image and async, async image basically lets you load a remote image asynchronously from a URL. And it will automatically also add a placeholder for the image while it is loading. So let's go back to Xcode and see this in action. Uh, we can just get rid of this and in our view we can also get rid of all of this here. And what I'm going to add here is I'm going to add a Z stack. And in my Z stack I'm going to add an async image. And you can see there are different initializers. I'm going to use this um, URL content and placeholder initializer. So for the URL, I'm going to provide here URL with a string. Uh, what I'll do is I'll just uh, load a random image from the Onsplash website. So HTTPS colon slash slash uh, source dot Onsplash dot com slash random slash 1000 by 1000. And now in the content, I'm going to get the actual image. So image in, and here what I'll do is I'm going to call image.resizable.aspectRatio and I'm going to modify the content mode to be fill. And in the placeholder, instead of using the default gray placeholder, 
I'm going to use uh, orange, so color.orange with an opacity of uh, 0 0.5. And we can also modify the async image itself. So for example, I'm going to modify the frame so that it has a width of 400 and a height of 400 as well. And I'm also going to add a mask to the image. So in this case, I'm going to add a rounded rectangle with a corner uh, radius of, uh, let's do 16 here. Okay, let's run this and see how it looks. Uh, looks like the image didn't load and I see I have an error here in my URL. This should be an S. Let's try this again. Oh, I see I have another error here in the mask. I needed a period. So let's run this again and maybe this time our app will actually work. Perfect. So you can see we have the orange color while the image is loading and then once it's finished loading you see that um, we can actually see the image here and since we used a mask with a rounded rectangle we see that we have these rounded corners around the image. So let's go to our list and next I want to show you these uh, material backgrounds. So Apple added these new material styles that you can use to show for example in a background that will blur the background of a text for example but then still show the color of whatever is behind that text. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a uh, title on top of this image. So let's just add here a text and let's just put here async image and I'm going to give it a font of title. I'm going to make it bold, add some padding around it. And finally, I'm going to use the background modifier and I'm going to provide here ultra thin material. I'm also going to put this um, in a rounded rectangle so that we can add some rounded corners to our text. And so let's just here a corner radius of 8. Now let's run this again. So you can see we have the title here and since we use the ultra thin material style you can see that the text background is uh, blurry, but you can still get some of the colors in the image behind the text. Cool, let's go back to our note. And now we're going to see how we can use the refreshable modifier to automatically handle refreshing our uh, UI. So for example, uh, with refreshable, we can add the swipe to swipe down to refresh and it will, for example, update the content in our list. So let's go back here to Xcode and um, what we're going to do here is let's add a state variable. That's state private var items. And we can just make this a list of integers. Um, let's actually define here a structure that will represent our items. So let's add here a struct item which is identifiable let id be equal to uuid and let number which is an int and now in our list instead of storing integers we're going to store items and let's just initialize this with um, 15 ra random items so let's just do um, zero uh, to 15 and we'll map this to generate um, a random number so in dot random a random number between 0 and 100 and we'll just initialize an item with um, the number that was generated okay um, now let's get rid of these, all these that we have here. And what we're going to add in our body is a list, which will show the items. 
and for each item we're going to add a text that will just show the item's number. Okay. Um, let's see if this builds. Okay, perfect. And now to be able to refresh the list, all we have to do here is add the uh, refreshable modifier. And in this case, when you uh, pull to refresh, um, all we're going to do is update this list of items to generate 15 new random numbers. So we can just copy uh, what we did here. And let's just do items equal to uh, the same statement that generates the random numbers. So let's run this. As you can see, we have uh, 15 random numbers here and we can pull and our numbers will be refreshed and our list will be updated. Perfect, so let's go back to our note and we have one final thing that I want to show you, which is the badge modifier. So you've probably seen badges for example, in uh, messaging apps that show uh, a small red uh, number in a red circle that tells you how many messages you have, or maybe in like uh, Instagram, you can see how many direct messages you have in the uh, notifications. So um, we now have a batch modifier in Swift UI that we can use to show uh, a similar thing. Um, so I'm going to show you how we can use it. And it's actually very simple. So let's, we can get rid of all these here and we're going to use a tab view um, to be able to uh, demo this badge uh, component. So let's add here a tab view and I'm just going to add two tabs which will show some text. So the first tab will just say um, home tab and the tab item will just show an image with the system name uh, house and then I'm going to add here in another text and this will just say uh, notifications tab let's do tab item and the item will be an image with the system name bell and I'm going to add here the batch modifier and there are different initializers. You can show some custom text, but in our case, I'm just going to show a number. So for example, let's add here the number five. It's extremely simple to use this modifier. Um, so now let's run our app and see how it looks. Great, so you can see we have our two tabs and on the notifications tab or uh, the one with the bell icon, you can see we have the, the batch in the red circle and if we press it we go to the notifications tab great so we've gone through the list of all these new things uh, that apple released for swift ui these are some of my favorite there are many things that apple released and will be showing throughout the week so i'm going to link some of my uh, favorite sessions so far where where you can learn more about everything that apple um, is giving developers so make sure to watch them because they're very helpful in learning about all these new components and new features that Apple has added to Swift UI. And also make sure to subscribe to my channel as I'll be posting new videos very soon.